We're moving forward with our next presentation with the title Global SEO, Think Global, Act Local. It will be held by Matthias Michalik, who is Managing Director for Claneo, and Peter Hartmann, who is a Global Digital Marketing Manager for Henkel. And uh, we will learn in this talk about SEO and especially how to make SEO work on a global scale. Hi everyone, thank you very much for visiting our presentation today about Global SEO, Thinking Global, Acting Local. I have my co-speaker with me, Peter. Yes, hello, my name is Peter Hartmann, I'm Global Digital Marketing Manager at Henkel. Um, for those of you who don't know Henkel, Henkel is uh, one of the biggest companies in Germany. We have three different uh, business areas, laundry and home care with brands like Persil or Sumat. Um, we have beauty care with uh, Schwarzkopf and uh, Sias, for example. And uh, I'm working for the uh, adhesive technologies part there in the adhesives uh, consumer and craftsman's business, where we have brands like Loctite, Patex and uh, Pritt. And um, I'm responsible for bringing traffic to our websites, making sure that we are found. And here also Matthias comes into play. Hi Matthias, I'm the co-founder and managing director of Claneo. We are an international award-winning agency from Berlin, focusing on digital marketing, especially in search marketing, performance marketing and content marketing. And today we would like to show you a great case we set up with Henkel. Uh, the case started already in 2018 and now we have really extraordinary results. And before we start about the process and how we set up a global SEO project at Henkel, we would like to start with a why. So why should we invest in SEO? So when it comes to the consumer journey, we see that we have to understand where the consumer journey begins. So what are the topics consumers are interested in, what they are looking for, and how we can satisfy, satisfy their needs. So when we have a look at the consumer journey, the consumer journey can be quite complex, right? So we have online channels, we have offline channels, we have TV, we have out of home. And for us, we focus mainly on the online channels and the digital marketing uh, field. And when we have a look at the website, and the website can be a central, central communication um, topic for you as a brand, for you as a company, we often see that if a consumer has a question that they use Google. Right? So nevertheless, we know that the consumer journey often starts with a Google search. So if you don't know anything about a topic, about a problem, either you ask your family, your friends, or you use Google. So you enter a keyword, but I would say nowadays it's more than just a keyword, right? It's a need a consumer may have, a question a consumer may have, or even a problem a consumer would like to solve. So for us as a brand, it's really, really important uh, to understand our consumers. And how do we understand our consumers and how do we understand what kind of information they were looking for and what kind of information we need to deliver as a brand? We can use one tool and this tool is something what you should also test for your company, for your brand. It's Answer the Public. Answer the Public is a tool where you can enter a keyword, a phrase, and then you get a lot of suggestions. So it's based on Google Suggest and they try to, um, to, to collect all the Google suggest, su Suggestions for your uh, keyword. And when we have a look about the topic gluing, and it's not just for Patex and, and Loctec for the adhesive brands of Henkel that we talk about gluing, but gluing is one sector we are looking in. And also um, it comes to repairing or fixing or installing. But let's have a look, look what people may search on Google when they search for glue. So they ideally are looking for a solution. They have probably a problem, uh, something broke, and they are looking for uh, what is the best glue for plastic or maybe what is the best glue for, for fabric or how to glue um, glass together or how to glue any other ceramic or whatever. So you see that people are looking for specific needs they have. and. As, as a brand, we have to answer all the complex questions on our website. So we have to understand what they were looking for, and then uh, we can provide the right content and the right information. And when we have a look 
on the Google opportunity um, of the, or the size of the opportunity we have as a brand, we did a research in 2018 and we were looking for five major countries and there we could analyze that there are a lot of different queries, a lot of different keywords and topics we should cover and in total we had 44 million searches a year and if we compare it with the, with the traffic we had back then at the brand pages 2018, we see that we just have 1.2 million um, yearly visits on our website. So that's a really small amount of the full potential. And when we have a look, and our goal was to, to rank high on Google in the top three positions, that we see at, at least we want to, to aim for 40 million visits a year for all the brand websites we have in the markets. And this is like the biggest opportunity we had as, as a brand to be present where people start the consumer journey. And when we have a look on, on Google, we have two different approaches to winning search. The first one is to concentrate on Google advertising, right? So we can invest in paid search ads, we can get the traffic, we can pay for the traffic, but here the biggest, uh, biggest difficulty is that when we stop investing into Google advertising, we also will stop having traffic and we will stop having revenue. So, and this is something we have seen in the Corona crisis last year, when a lot of brands stopped their marketing activities and paid media, that they also lost the revenue or lost the traffic. And the second option, and this is the option we are focusing on in this uh, presentation is about rank high on the Google search result pages. And here it's more that we have an investment in the beginning, so we invest in, in good content, we invest in our website, we invest in our asset, the website, um, and then we will benefit out of this uh, investment for a long period of time. And how this works, we'll tell Peter you in a second. Yes. <clears throat> Thanks, Matthias. Uh, I like that you said we, and like our brands when you were talking about this, because we have been doing this now for also then uh, more than three years. Um, so how do we actually set this up at Henkel, so at our consumer business unit? Um, first things first, we have to include SEO in our strategy. So it's right there, as you can see. Uh, the goal of the strategy which we have is to create a sustainable competitive advantage from digital transformation. And as you can see, we have the consumer journey in there in the consideration stage where people are actually searching, where they are reaching out for a solution. We should be there, not our competitors, we should be there. And therefore we said, this is what we want to do. We want to own the digital consideration stage in that one. And this means that we want to be on the top three organic search results on Google for more than 80% of relevant search results and also have a fair share on Google when it comes to uh, the, the traffic which you want to get on there. Um, the setup when it came then to the, the project was then uh, a global one. Um, taking a look at uh, the focus which we, we have, we have nine different websites which we all chose based on what's the return on investment uh, in the next three years versus SEA in there. Plus we were thinking about okay where's the biggest search potential really which we could win. Uh, we did this in six countries, four different languages, so a truly global approach which we had. Different brands, as uh, I already said, Loctite, Rupson, Patex, Unibond, LePage, everything basically on there. And we were working then with Carneo as our search agency in there, also still <laughs> working with Carneo in there, plus a content agency, which is Content Fleet, so Carneo responsible for everything which is happening around SEO, Content Fleet then for the content creation in there. Behind there are also some agencies when it comes to Technology, it's uh, an eccentric which you're working with when it comes to publishing. We have text to net in there and all in all, we are working with over a hundred Henkel persons in there to make sure that this is a successful uh, approach in here. Um, Matthias, if you could explain a bit like what we were doing then from SEO side. So we have like a four step approach. First of all, before starting creating content, before starting any activity, we need to define a strategy. So we need to identify our target group, we have to identify the topics they were looking for and we have also to understand what kind of content they expect. So do they looking for guides, for applications, for how-to content or how-to videos and this is like the first step you should take. The second step was that we have a technical foundation. We worked out a technical audit of the websites to ensure we have a more friendly mobile setup, we have a fast website, we have a good user experience on the page and also that the search engines understand the structure of the page and can crawl the page probably. 
And then we have the third topic about the content so that we have to create the content based on the strategy. So we can understand what con consumers are looking for, how often they are looking for, for issues, topics on a monthly basis, and this helps us to prioritize the content plan. Then we work with the content fleet agency to create the content, also to get the feedback of the uh, technical service team from Henkel to make sure that the content fits to the brand, fits to the uh, audience. And the fourth and last step was also to make sure that the new content we created is also linked externally so that publishers are linking to us, bloggers are linking to us. Whoever has a website should also link to us as a good authority, as a good source of knowledge when it comes to gluing, fixing or even repairing. Thanks <laughs> for that one. Um, when it came then from, from content side, uh, we are talking about the, the implementation on, um, on the content agency side. Um, they had actually the, the challenge that we see that uh, they had to transcreate a lot of content. So we were always creating global masters in there, which were then not only translated, but transcreated into different languages. Um, therefore, of course, they had many interfaces when it came to, to our local countries in there. On the other side, uh, they also had to make sure that they have the uh, journalists, the writers in native, uh, who are native speakers, who are actually also known, uh, know the product, uh, which should actually also write quality content to make sure that they are actually um, um, uh, performing to, to their best. So therefore, they also had a central coordination in the middle to make sure that they are on one side getting all the requirements from um, our peers, so for my peers uh, actually in the countries, and on the other side have also then uh, control over what is written afterwards. We always do an onboarding with all the different countries in there where we explain the process step by step and also then tell them what they need to do, what they uh, shouldn't do in there. And this leads in the end uh, to something which looks this. So one of the main things which we've learned also during the project is to create a robust process in there, meaning we have a tool assisted process. This is uh, now Microsoft Teams, which you see here, which we are using at Henkel. And uh, you can see that we have different channels um, on the left side uh, for the different countries and also the global marketing in there. Uh, and you can see also different swim lanes, let's say. You can think of it as a Kanban board, and each of the cards which you see on there is actually one article which needs to be reviewed in there. Um, different people are then tagged on this when it comes then to the global, um, uh, global masters. We have um, people from category, people from brand, people also who are technical experts looking at the content, making sure that it's actually working, that we are not over-promising something also in there. Um, and then afterwards, um, Content Fleet is a, a, taking the feedback, working on it, giving it back for us to have a final OK. And we are also repeating this process then after transcreation on local level to be really 100% sure that um, Everything we, are, we have written, everything we have claimed is actually right. This is how it works. And uh, if you also want to do something like this, I would also say uh, use a, pro a process like this. Because if you would just use emails, this will not work in the end. Um, why am I actually standing here together with Mateos? Why am I very confident in what we are claiming in here? Uh, it's because we already achieved uh, a lot in here. Um, it's an old slide, but it's also so, uh, something uh, where you can already see where the journey will be going to. 2019, we started this um, with the nine websites which we had in the initial global setup, which you could also see. Um, and what you can see here is, first of all, over the years, we have added more and more websites to the approach. This is simply because we see the approach is working and uh, more and more countries want to participate in this approach. And of course, we are very happy to uh, then also do so. Um, then you see the, the line, which is the visits in there. Visits means the visits which we wanted to accomplish um, up until 2021 in here. Uh, so in 2019, we achieved 27% of this, uh, of the final number in there, 2020, 69% already. And now for 2021, we are very confident that we will actually over deliver on what we actually thought we would have. And uh, one of the uh, nicest numbers in here is also the media value, which is generated by doing this uh, exercise, which we are doing. Uh, this is always versus the last year. So in 2019, we created 25% more media value by doing this approach. Uh, in 2020, it was over 120% more media value. 2021, you can see that we expect also to um, 
uh, grow this uh, with a larger percentage in here. Um, you can also see, I mean, this is also as a, as a disclaimer that COVID also has had an impact on our numbers. So in 2020, you see a large spike then around March, April in there. Um, but this doesn't mean that, you know, this was just like a, a boost or something, but we see that it was an acceleration to the project. You can see that we are also after uh, the first lockdown was were also lifted, when people were searching more for DIY work, um, that you can see that uh, we are still growing our traffic on there, which means that we just are now on the next level. And uh, we see this also like in the first uh, weeks, uh, sorry, first month of 2021, and that this is an ongoing trend which we have in here. Um, Matthias, if you want to take us through some examples. Yeah, let's have a deep dive into the German market. Uh, Patex, a well-known gluing brand in Germany. You find it everywhere where you can buy glue. And here also there was already a really stable brand and authority in this field, but still the content was missing. So we created a content based on the consumer needs and you see that the graph is, is, is growing from month to month, even that the first month were quite flat. And that's, I would say, maybe the disadvantage of SEO. You have to be patient, right? You need to take the time because it's not the case that you will publish content and the content will perform the next day. It will take you three to six months. But once you are in the top positions, you are quite stable there and it's quite hard to compete against a well-optimized piece of content, a well-optimized landing page. Um, on the left side, you see in left, left, left uh, bottom corner, you see some uh, KPIs. We could nearly, um, um, increased the traffic by five times. And also like the top three rankings from the beginning in 2018, where we uh, started with the project, with the preparation of the project. Um, and nowadays you see that we could increase the top three rankings. So the rankings on the first three positions on the Google search result page uh, by even three times. And on the right side, you, you also see the, the, the dedicated keyword ranking. So you see how strong the rankings are today and also what kind of rankings we had before. So for some keywords, even if it's the main keyword like, like a Kleber, we didn't have any ranking at all. And also all the variations we could improve from, from let's say a position somewhere on position uh, or page two or three from the Google search result to the first three, first five uh, results. And also here, even that we're focusing on how-to content about guidance content, also inspirational content, you see that we still can improve the ranking for our product keywords. And that's also really important that even if we um, become an authority for the topic around about gluing, fixing and, and installing, we also become an authority for the brand, for the, for the category keywords. And on the other side, we also have an example for the US market. The US market is much more competitive than the German market, but also here we had a really good, uh, really good uh, journey so far. So also a quite flat graph in the beginning because it takes time until you ramp up the project. It takes time until you publish the content and until the published content get the first rankings. But you see that the graph is growing from, from month to month and it's still growing. So we see that we haven't reached the, the, the final positions, so we still can improve keywords uh, on a keyword level. And also on the, on the left bottom corner, you see the KPIs, the organic uh, traffic since 2018. Uh, we could nearly uh, multiple the traffic on a monthly basis by five times. And also the top three rankings are more or less uh, 2.5 uh, a multiple of 2.5 in the top three. And on the right side in the table, you see the dedicated detailed keyword rankings. And you see that in the beginning, we were somewhere nowhere uh, on position um, 20 up. And now we are in the top three. And that's a really good achievement because just on the top three positions, you can also expect to get the traffic. But what was the key success factor? So maybe Peter, you can tell us how we structured it. Yes, another slide you've been all waiting for in this one. So you, we have these great results. How do you actually accomplish something like this also? Um, we got it down to six factors where we believe this is really important when it comes to uh, doing an approach like this. First, do deep SEO research. As also Matthäus was saying in the beginning, so it's not only you know searching for the right keywords which you uh, can then target. It's also making sure that your target audience is actually searching for these um, plus 
uh, to respond with an article which also has um, uh, is picking up the intention of the search afterwards. Because otherwise, you are just doing keyword stuffing; it will not work. Second, to include the uh, include SEO and strategy, this is what we already uh, discussed in there. It's also important for another point which I didn't mention earlier. Um, SEO takes time, as also Matteo said. You know, so after six to nine months, I would say six to nine months, right? Something yeah. like this, good. Um, then uh, you, you pick up the traffic, but only until then you will see nothing. This means that you need also some commitment and from top management to support this, and not only like for one year, but uh, in the best case also for multiple years. So secured funding is also important because you set up a strategy not only for one year or two years, but multiple years. Um, this makes sure that you are actually executing the approach to this fully uh, extinct in there. Number three, uh, that's why I'm also standing here, you have to choose the right partners. And I'm very happy that I'm presenting today with uh, Carneo in this one, because uh, they are good experts when, when it comes to SEO. Um, it's, we also took a look at a lot of agencies before we actually took Carneo. Um, Matthias might still remember that we did a pitch with multiple agencies and he had to wait a long time until he actually got the final response, because we were also discussing internally which agency actually then to pick. And um, this is also important because of the delay of the results, you know, so six to nine months, you have to wait. And if you are then working six to nine months with a partner who cannot execute you, you will not notice, you know, and they can, they can always come up then with some examples why it doesn't work. Um, it helps also if you are on the client side, you have a bit of knowledge on what is happening because then uh, you can also uh, see if they are just bullshitting around or not, you know, this is also helpful in there. Number four, create a robust process. You already saw that. Uh, make sure that everybody also knows about this process. Make sure you execute it in the right way. Uh, make sure that also everybody buys into this process. Uh, this is really important. Number five, make content a priority. Very important. And we got actually some, um, uh, let's say, some boost by our top management in that one because they actually also identified that content is very important when it comes to digital marketing. If there is no content, you are not there. If we are searching for something and we don't pop up, then we are not existing. If you go to Amazon and wanna buy a product, there are no product pictures, then you don't believe it's actually existing, right? So you wouldn't buy. So therefore, content is a priority, and this is actually uh, implemented by having blockers in the calendars of all employees who are participating in this project to make sure they have enough time to approve this content. You know, so for, for some it's just like, okay, I will just say, okay, yes, it's fine for me. But in the end, behind this, there is actually sales, you know, so and this is what we also want to then accomplish in here. And number six, and this is not an esoteric one, this is also not a like, spiritual one, or I don't know, like so just to feel good one in there, it's make it fun. Make it fun is really important um, because you will not get the buy-in from the people if this is not fun. Um, as, as an example, if you later on view this presentation again and you go back to the slide uh, which shows 2019, yes, we had an increase of 27%, uh, on, we achieved 27% of our goal in there, but it was actually not uh, what we uh, expected. So we expected actually a bit more, but we didn't get the particip participation of the people. When we then installed uh, a gamification approach, which makes sure that um, people are actually competing against each other and they can win a team building activity in the end for this one, we saw that approval rates went up and this was really important for us and we are still keeping the system um, because it's working. Uh, so this is just for you. So if you take anything uh, from this talk, take this slide <laughs> in there. What's next? So what are the next steps in there? We are taking a look at uh, other search engines, second biggest search, uh, search engine in the world is YouTube, so we stole this slide from Google actually. Um, we see that a lot of people are actually switching between Google and YouTube when it comes to DIY projects, when they are searching for something, they want to accomplish something. Uh, so therefore, next up actually, we will conquer YouTube. <laughs> this is what we are going to do. Um, yes. Yeah, thank you very much. If you would like to have more insights about a project, about the process, feel free to reach out to Peter or me on LinkedIn, on email, we are happy to discuss about your issues, about your problems by tackling a global SEO approach. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Matthias and Peter, for this um, yeah incredible success story. And uh, of course, it's always great to read a success story like this. And in your case, the numbers uh, almost seem unbelievable. They are amazing. So, like the question, like that we have in our minds, what do you think might have caused such an increase in the SEO results on all pages at the same time? Like, was it technical improvements? Is it like uh, just learning from best practices, good training of the employees? Probably a mix, but um, I'm, I'm asking yeah. you. Yeah, I would say it's definitely a mix because um, it's not only the case that you need a good website, a fast website. You need for sure the right content. You need the buy-in of the management. You need the people to interact with the project. So. We had a lot of different um, brands we were involving in this project, a lot of different employees, and we needed to get their feedback to publish content. So I think it's a mix of different factors. And I would say you should be best in class when it comes to technical SEO, when it comes to the strategy, the content itself. Um, and I would say that's always a mix. Um, and I, I would say also that the, 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 um, the constellation between the right content partner, the right uh, agency uh, from a strategy perspective, what we, we've done in the past, and, and the team uh, on the client side, that this, this mix was the, the, the key success factor when it comes to, to uh, these amazing numbers. Thanks a lot for explaining this. And uh, so for the next question, like this is like about the, 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 the sheer feasibility of, of this project, like 750 articles. I mean, that's... Uh, quite a lot. So like, how long does it take to create 750 articles about industry? And uh, like, and also like, in, like, how long will you have to wait to see the results? What do you think? The first yeah. results? Uh, good question. Um, in our case, I mean, it, it, we took some time, <laughs> we took some time to do this. Um, so it's uh, two, two and a half years where we are doing this. Um, but by now, I mean, uh, we are doing this now in 30 for 30 different websites in there. Um, we were actually doing this uh, before then in um, um, those 14 different countries which, which we have. Um, so over 100 people basically then also um, attached to this approach, uh, meaning that you need a lot of alignment in there. You know? So it's not like, also, also especially when we, when we talk about a big company like Henkel, you have multiple people, multiple, multiple levels which want just to, to have an impact also then in there. Um, so therefore, it took quite a while, but in the end, uh, after six to nine uh, months, we actually saw then the first, let's say, traction, which we got from there. And then in 2020, uh, the, the beginning of it, so after a full year, I would say, you could really see that this approach is delivering to its results. So after a year, and it takes some good project management, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah wonderful. And um, how have you assessed the quality of the content, especially for different languages? I imagine like that there are differences, like or are there differences between indexing of results from country to country that might vary? Like, or how do you compare these? Yeah. Yeah. So for sure, you have different different approaches per market. So we try to have, let's say, uh, an approach where we can say, okay, we have content we can create. On a, as a master and then also to integrate or translate in, into the, the core markets. But also for sure you have topics which are just relevant for one market and one dedicated market. So the strategy was really important that we worked out a strategy with natives. So it's not someone who was a good at, in French at school did, did the strategy. It's always <laughs> that we work with natives and that's the same for the content creation, right? So you need to have the local experts that they understand the language, understand the target group, the, the consumer in the local markets. Um, and also that we got the feedback from, from Henkel and the Henkel team that they also have a lot of experience in the market so they can give us the right angle of a content. But for sure, you need to make sure that it's not just a translation, it needs to be a transcreation. So all the cultural things in a content needs to be adapted to a market because I'm sure that the French consumer search different for, for gluing, fixing topics than someone from Poland or from Germany or even from, from America. We see that when it comes to, let's say, more um, heavy, heavy um, projects like uh, building a house that when you, when you change the windows and, and, and you install the windows that in the US they use different techniques, different glues, different products than in Germany. So you also have like, let's say, safety concerns you need to integrate into the content to, to make sure that it's fitting to the target group in the local market.
Okay, so Google Translate won't fix the No, no, that's, that's quite, <laughs> yeah, quite yeah, difficult, yeah. yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe a small addition to that yeah. one, like just as a real life example, um, when we talk about Windows, for example, in the US, they are totally different from the ones which we have here in Europe. You know? So therefore, when you are writing the articles, mm -hmm. we are then finding out, okay, this is, not, this is not working because they cannot open the windows fully. They have these like sliding windows in there, whereas we can open them fully. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we are tend to rewrite this content, yeah. And sockets. Yeah. Uh, sorry, everywhere you look. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so for the next questions, like also like to go into like uh, the financial part of it. Obviously, top management you said needs to be on board, so they want to see some KPIs uh, successful. So what is the 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 ROI for SEO project? Yeah. Uh, is it likely? Is it a straightforward calculation as within the context of um, PPC advertisement, or is it? Uh, well, I, I mean, like you don't see like the clear cost of acquisition of a client, or like how do you yeah. translate this for for numbers and for the for the top management? Yeah. Yeah. So in our global project, I think the, the 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 big disadvantage was that it's just a brand website, right? So it's not a full e-commerce website, so we can't buy you can't buy the product on a brand website. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, we can uh, calculate the value of the traffic which comes to the website. So what we've used is to use. Um, let's say Google Ads as a, as, a, as a calculation basis to understand, okay, when we would buy traffic for those keywords, we would pay uh, the, this per click. And this is something that we can calculate to, a, to the full media value, what we should invest otherwise in SEA, so in Google Ads, would, when we would not have the, the, the possibility to, to get all the organic traffic, right? So you still have a, a basis for calculation, what you can use for the management, right? That we say, hey, look, that's what we have achieved so far, that's the traffic, and this traffic is worth this amount of money, and otherwise we would not have this project, we would have to buy it on Google Ads. And this is how we, we calculated it. And then after a while, you have a break even, for sure, because First, you have an initial, uh, initial uh, investment, but after a while, you have a big basis of content. So, sure, you have to recreate or rework the content because probably some topics may change or different, different trends may, may come up, but still the foundation is there. So, you will benefit of your first two or three years of, of investment over the next five to ten years. Yeah, you, you mentioned this, like, like if great articles were created and you assumed uh, the return of invest would, in, would increase after many years. So however, are these articles at a certain point becoming outdated or how do you make sure that like uh, they are up to date? How often would you need to make changes or like do you keep monitoring them or like, uh, yeah, like uh, any, for instance in seven years, uh, how do you look back and uh, <laughs> do you need new content or you update it? That's a lot of questions. <laughs> 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 <Standing here. laughs> no, no, like, I, so the main question yeah, yeah. is like, how do you uh, maintain it to be up to date? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, uh, we have a lot of content which is, I would say, like evergreen content in there. So when people are searching for like how to unglue their hands, for example, what's the best super glue and so on. So um, the, the answer to this will probably not change in uh, like some years. On the other hand, there, there's also um, uh, content which are monitoring, which is uh, not performing for some reasons in there. For, for these, you always have then to go over the content, make sure that uh, you are you know, rewriting the content, making sure that it's uh, then still fitting also to the consumer needs in there, for sure. And uh, I mean, with the statistics, I'm actually not, not, not that sure, but like I know that the, the search behavior is changing after some years, always to some degree. So therefore, doing um, um, a keyword analysis, uh, doing a potential analysis um, after a certain period of time is, of course, also needed to see, do we still meet the consumer need or not in there. Wonderful. That's uh, that's a wrap. Thanks a lot, Matthias and Peter, for like uh, this amazing presentation. Uh, great results and uh, hopefully inspiring Q and A's as well. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks.